In this lesson, we'll be talking about creating an effective CV, the master CV and the tailored CV. As we begin, we need to address a commonly asked question. What's the difference between a CV and a resume? Oftentimes, these two terms are used interchangeably. The goal for both documents is the same, to get an interview. A resume or summary typically focuses on the skills and competencies relevant to the position and is limited to one to two pages, whether describing an emerging or an established career. In the context of an academic job search, hiring committees typically ask for a curriculum vitae or the story of your professional life, which provides a comprehensive view of your academic and employment history all the while highlighting relevant accomplishments and skills. If a job posting is unclear in requesting a CV or a resume, it's okay to ask the contact listed in the job posting. In this lesson, we'll discuss what the master CV looks like and how to effectively tailor your CV for individual job applications. When done well, your tailored CV is your best sales pitch. A master CV is a written collection that highlights and summarizes your educational background, professional experiences and activities, skills, accomplishments, and other information relevant to your professional life. You may be tempted to omit certain details, such as the language club social you organized for 50 people across disciplines, or the volunteer editing you did as a graduate student. But keep all the details. Don't worry about your master CV being too long or too broad. It's a file for you. Once you identify a specific job to apply for, that's the time to trim down the information for a tailored CV. Take a moment to consider these categories that typically appear on a CV. In the master CV, you'll want to include all the relevant categories to capture your entire educational, professional, and volunteer background and skill set. Each experience or accomplishment is listed in reverse chronological order within its section. For experience, it's not enough to just list your job title, institution, and department, and the dates of employment. You'll also want to include a short narrative or bulleted points that explain the specifics of each job. For language educators who have worked in different roles, it's also common to have multiple sections of experience. For example, teaching experience, research experience, and administrative experience, all in the same CV. Academics and researchers typically include their publications and conference presentations toward the beginning of their master CVs and these are listed according to the style most commonly used in their field. For example, Applied Linguistics and Linguistics usually follow the publication manual of the American Psychological Association, or APA style. The Chicago Manual of Style and the MLA Handbook are also commonly used style guides, depending on the discipline. While the initial sections of the master CV speak mostly to your education and experience, remember to also include your skills. Depending on the prospective job context, your language proficiency may be listed in more technical terms where your prospective hiring committee will mostly include language professionals and perhaps in less detail for a general audience. Under Computer and Technology, list all the skills you have in your master CV, even if some of them may be basic to you. Later, at the time for tailoring your CV after a thorough information search, the job description you have at hand will give clues as to which computer skills may be assumed and which you should include on your tailored CV. Some applicants prefer to include their list of references as a section in their master CV. It's also possible to include it as a separate page as part of your portfolio. Either way, be sure to keep your references informed about the jobs you're applying to 
so it's not a surprise when they receive a call from a prospective employer. In your master CV, list all the duties and responsibilities and achievements at each position you've held in the past. You never know what may seem extraneous now may end up being the experience that makes you stand out for a job five years from now. Organize your master CV so the information can be found easily when you need it. In this case, for creating a tailored CV. The common categories presented on this slide are by no means exhaustive. Which categories are most applicable to you? If a category does not apply, don't worry. Every career trajectory is unique. When you tailor your CV to a specific position, you make it easy for the hiring committee to know that you're the best candidate for the job. A tailored CV is created by first making a copy of your most up-to-date master CV and editing the document so that it addresses the specific requirements of the job you're applying for. Think of a well-tailored suit or jacket. The material or experiences are of a high quality and the extra fabric or irrelevant information is trimmed away. The fit makes the person stand out. The tailored CV presents information in a prioritized way based on how the requirements of the position are prioritized in the duties and responsibilities, minimum qualifications, and desired qualifications of the job posting. Details irrelevant to the job are deleted. This way, what's most pertinent shines. There's one caveat. We're not suggesting that you leave gaps in your employment history. If you took a bridge job, meaning a job for making ends meet that may not seem to fit your career trajectory, or if you took a break in your employment, do somehow illustrate what you accomplished during this time. For example, a good friend of mine considered leaving a two-year gap on her CV with no entry about what she had done during this time. In fact, she has successfully established and sold a small business at profit, all the while completing her dissertation. Although this may not be typical with an academic career, the demonstrated intelligence and ability to multitask, not to mention business savvy, are unparalleled. Had she left those transferable skills off her CV, she would have been doing herself a disservice. To tailor your CV, begin by reading the job description carefully. Highlight keywords of the main responsibilities, minimum qualifications, and desirable qualifications, and note the order in which key requirements appear. This careful reading will help you prioritize the order for various sections in your tailored CV. If questions come up as you read the job description, Try to answer them through your information search. For example, this job advertisement mentions teaching in a general education program. To find out what types of courses are included in that program, you can search the departmental website and identify which courses faculty have taught in the general education program. For the main courses taught, such as those in pedagogical grammar, educational linguistics, in the history of language, you could look at available course descriptions or syllabi to learn coursework details. With this information, you'll be able to examine your own background and identify the most relevant skills and experiences that meet the department's needs. How can you highlight your experiences? There are three ways to do this. First, by including a short bio that appears at the top of your CV. Second, you can prioritize the most salient information to appear on the first and second pages. And third, you can use specific language to demonstrate the scope of your responsibilities and achievements. The short bio is something I personally recommend. This feature is optional. 
While not commonly used, it's a practical signpost that helps the hiring committee remember your relevant experience. The short bio doesn't simply summarize your CV. It highlights your key experience and skills as required by the job advertised in 50 to 150 words. Just as in the rest of your CV, you'll want to use the same keywords as the job advertisement. While your cover letter explains how your prior experiences are relevant to the prospective job, your short bio reminds your prospective employer to look at the specifics of those experiences in the main body of your CV. When a position is advertised, how many applicants on average apply for the job? According to Forbes in 2013, the number is 118. Imagine if you had to review 118 CVs within two eight-hour workdays. How much time would you spend on each CV? With no breaks at all, you would have roughly eight minutes per CV to whittle down the pile to a more manageable size. How would you sift through the applications? First, you would look at the minimum qualifications for the position. If an application does not seem to meet them, then it would immediately end up in the reject pile. This is why we always recommend a careful reading of the job advertisement and that you organize your tailored CV in the same order as the description itself. As an illustration of this, we're often asked whether the education section or the work experience section should appear first. In your job search, you may have noticed that most academic positions list the level of education first under minimum qualifications. Thus, typically, your education appears first on a CV for an academic position to show that you meet the minimum qualifications. You'll also see that in the corporate world, required work experience is often listed first. If that's the case, you'll want to prioritize work experience on a resume tailored for a corporate environment, and education will appear second. Depending on the academic position, sometimes research experience is weighed more heavily than teaching experience. The job posting will show which to place first on your CV. It all depends on what the specific position is asking for. What if the job posting does not present a clear order? You might find that more often than not, an advertised job is actually a mashup of two positions. If there's no clear order, try to create an organized outline of the job posting on your own, changing the original arrangement as little as possible and tailor your CV to that outline. The third way to tailor your CV is through adjusting the descriptions under each position held. Remember, your master CV will have listed all the job tasks and accomplishments from your entire professional life. To tailor your CV, begin by asking yourself, what sections should be included, revised, or removed for this particular job application? Revise and edit the entries so they precisely address the needs of the job you're applying for. Each detail of your prior experience may appear as its own bulleted item, but the order would be prioritized to address the specific needs of the position. As much as possible, try to use the language of the job advertisement to demonstrate a close alignment of your background and experiences with the job at hand. After you've done all the work of tailoring your CV, take another look. Does your CV reflect your philosophy of teaching or research? If you find inconsistencies between your CV and your philosophy of teaching, these may be clues pointing to questions about the fit of the position. Alternatively, the inconsistencies may simply reveal spotty areas where you can provide more information to express a more complete picture of who you are as a candidate. In this lesson, we discuss the differences between the master CV and the tailored CV 
and how to tailor your CV with organization and specificity. Take heart. The CV is tailored as your experience grows. If you're at the start of your career, don't expect your CV to look like that of someone with five or 10 years of experience. Do, however, set a reminder for yourself to update your master CV once every three to six months. If you see an ideal job for which you don't have the required qualifications, save that job advertisement. The requirements may provide a roadmap of experiences you should seek out on the way to that ideal position. In the next lesson, we'll discuss common CV pitfalls with a more in-depth look at formatting.